we got so excited by that, that idea that we just started pumping all these creative cycles into coming up with ideas and a concept. And eventually we just put a pitch together and, and went down and, and pitched the execs. It was actually shockingly like the final product. They loved what, what we proposed and, and they gave us the gig. So it's a huge opportunity for us as, as Turok fans. Vancouver-based Propaganda Games successfully convinced the executives at Touchstone that they were the right developer for the job. I mean, it started with very much looking at it almost as if it was a movie script at first and saying, here are the characters and here's what's important to them and here's what the motivation is and how are they going to develop as they confront these different issues. We've only got 30 minutes till we touch down. So I'm only going to say this once. Our target is Roland Kane, leader of the legendary Wolf Pack. We had uh, screenwriters from Hollywood come on board and help with treatments and do revisions. So it definitely was something that bubbled up from the inside, but that also was spread around. and got a lot of experience and a lot of talented people looking at it to, to look at the, the dialogue, to look at how the scenes came together. This near-future reimagining of the franchise places the gamer in the role of Joseph Turok. As a Black Ops soldier, Turok has engaged in many covert operations, the last of which, along with his Wolfpack compatriots, resulted in deaths that still haunt the beleaguered warrior. Now, as the most recent member of Whiskey Company, Turok's new mission is deeply personal. He and his squad look to apprehend Wolfpack's fallen leader. Hey, who's he? Hell Somebody get a bucket and mop. We got a new cleaner on board. This is an elite group that's fought together, and they don't need this outside presence coming in, so they don't even trust him at first. And when you're tossed out into a hostile environment that you're trying to survive, trust is really, really important. Turok's here to help us track Kane down. He's a former member of Wolfpack. Yeah, before he screwed him over. Play, can it? He can't be trusted. It's a really compelling kind of premise, and something that we could then build the entire experience around, you know, building out other characters to really flesh out the storyline, building out weapons and creatures to really make it a compelling gameplay experience. This futuristic, action-packed scenario lent itself perfectly to the kind of game the team at Propaganda wanted to develop, immersing the gamer into another world where they lived and breathed the same air as their character was paramount. That was so important to us, that this be a story that you get to live, that is not just a bunch of isolated plot points and a bunch of combat in between. You know, these aren't just guys that are on a mission trying to achieve one thing. These are individuals that are reacting in different ways and sometimes being confronted by terrifying things that makes them lose their cool. Crap. A great story does not necessarily make for a great game, especially when it comes to an action title like Turok. The developer had to take into account the interactive elements that will keep players involved and on the edge of their seats. Just in general, gameplay has to be foremost in, in all your decision making and story basically takes its, its lead from gameplay and supports that. As a result, gameplay and story elements often needed to be modified in order to keep a balance between the story narrative and the interactive nature of gameplay. We've actually gotten together as a group and said we don't like this part of the game and design leads come down and say, well, what can we do to make it better? A lot of times, yeah, they're totally open to, to feedback and to changing things. Once the team had settled on the design and gameplay elements in Turok, the concept artist stepped in and began to flesh out ideas. Our artists, are, they're amazing. They're off the hook and they created something which is incredibly beautiful and, and I really think that when the game comes out, people are going to say the same thing. You know, you're throwing ideas at the wall and seeing what sticks, so you get like the most amount of coverage. You get to do tons of different things all the time. Yeah, I would say offhand, I probably made around 300 to 350 paintings. The artist at Propaganda didn't work alone, however. Artists worked alongside designers or producers to better understand what elements the team needed. A producer will come up to you with a, with a brief, a creative brief for, you know, say a vehicle or a character or something like that. You would, you know, then concept out some ideas and then present it back to a group and sort of try and sell your ideas to that group. What ends up in the final product and what makes it so great is a collaboration between all of the people that are involved. Every conceivable detail began as a drawing of some sort. Whether it was a thumbnail sketch of a piece of equipment 
a colorful painting of a landscape, or a detailed schematic of a weapon. It fell on the shoulders of the guys in this room. It was here that the team honed the visual and atmospheric style of the game. So what we wanted to do was uh, take our jungles and make them scary. So we took a lot of inspiration from artists like Frank Frazetta, try and get that very swampy, misty, damp feel to the jungles, and try and make them very claustrophobic. We wanted to make sure that our environments really gave the AI a chance to shine. Like much of the development process, collaborative efforts figured prominently with the concept artists and their work. You know, say you concept a bunker or whatever, then they'll add their little touch and another person will add their little touch and eventually it becomes like this great amalgamation of like all these creative minds come together. We take that story point and we talk with the concept artists about what it is we're trying to look for with mood, working with like the artists. They'll paint like a really cool inspirational piece and then all of us level design are like, yeah, I can totally see that, you know, and, and then we sort of meet and iterate again. We just sort of use that as a, a guideline. At Propaganda, we make a point of making sure that, you know, we work cross-discipline. So we have our sprint groups who are working together to get features in the game. So we'll have programmers, designers, you know, an artist and an animator all in the same group. Through it all, the team at Propaganda Games worked together on every aspect to ensure an end result that everyone was happy with and that everyone had a stake in. Stay tuned for more as we'll examine the lifeblood of the game, Turok's remarkable artificial intelligence, and meet the stars of the show, the dinosaurs. All this and more on the next installment of Awakening the Giants, The Making of Turok.